Tony, we, we heard you at Berry Calla a couple of years ago and we were blessed. And we just thought it'd be great for other people to come and hear what you've got to say from those rivers of living water on the inside of you. And we don't need to introduce you because you're better introducing yourself because that will be more interesting for us if it comes from you. So we just want to say welcome. May the anointing of God fall on you that we would receive these things you have for us, not only in our ears, but in our hearts. And that fruit would come from the words that you share with us this night in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here. And, uh, you know, um, we, we, the Lord is, is really bringing us together to encourage one another and to pray for one another and to stand Hallelujah. in these times uh, together because uh, we are definitely going with a, a time of testing, testing for the whole world, but also test, testing for the body of Messiah. So I just want to, um, I just want to start with uh, what I, what, what I, 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 I'm sharing to everyone I, I meet for the first time, and uh, and this is uh, of course Second Chronicle chapter seven because for me it has been for the last six months the the same message. I mean we 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 are we are it's 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 one o one you know this is the basic message that the Lord is saying to us uh, concerning this issue of the virus. We cannot run away from from it, even though we all want to run away from it, but we have to face the reality in the face. God is in control. If God is a loving God and he has allowed uh, the virus to happen, the locust, which is the economic shutdown, you know, and the closing the water of blessing, uh, we know that he's trying to say something and we need to listen to his voice. This is very important. Uh, and so I, I just want to read uh, for you uh, Second Chronicle chapter 7. Um, and this is what God is saying. Uh, Thus says the Lord, if I shut up the heaven and there is no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, and if I send pestilence upon my people, then, if my people, upon whom my name is called, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. We need healing in our land. We need healing in our land. We need forgiveness for our sins. We need to hear his voice. And this is what the Lord is saying. It's basically, if I shut up the windows of heaven, you know, it's amazing because for, for the last 10 years, we had a drought in Israel. I don't know if you've been in Israel, you've heard about the drought, the level of the Sea of, of Galilee, which is the, you know, the, the sweet water uh, reservoir of, of all Israel. It was very, very low. It was, you know, everybody was saying, well, it's, it's, it's the red line, you know, and it's, it's it, so for 10 years, we had a drought. And then last year, I mean, uh, you know, not too long ago, <laughs> you know, the, the, the rainy season starts for us. It starts in October until, until February. We had so much rain that it filled the Sea of Galilee. So within a year, God was able to bring all the water that we needed that was not there for 10 years. So, so for us, it was just a sign that God is able, God is able to shut down, shut the water, shut the rain, and then open it again. So it's basically in control. So when the Lord says, if I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, like it happened in the time of, of um, you know, Elijah for three and a half years, you know, uh, God led him to pray that there will be no rain. Uh, because it was a time of of, of um, idol worship and uh, you know, rejecting the, the real true God of Israel, the worshiping of Baal, and you know, in the time of uh, Achab, the, the 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 wicked king. So the prophets of Baal were were consumed, and then once the the prophets of Baal were challenged and and. Uh, and, and they were killed, then the Lord sent back the rain. So uh, God is uh, able, able to open the windows of heaven and close them. And within a year, it can, it can, it can produce you know, what we need for, for, for 10 years. God is the God of the miraculous, is the God who opens the heavens and closes it. The second thing he says, if I send 
the locusts to devour the land. And I don't know if you, I, you know, I am in connection with some people in Africa and in India where they have locusts, a big locust. And it's not 10 locusts, it's not 100, it's not 1,000, it's a million, millions, millions. They come and they, they just go over the fields and they eat everything, the crops, the trees, everything. Nothing is left. So it's basically the economic shutdown. And, I, and you know, with this, uh, with this uh, corona, we had also economic shutdown in many, many countries, uh, many, uh, many uh, cities. Uh, many people lost their jobs. Many people are unemployed, and and basically this is a, this is a big thing because you know I mean the god of this world is Mammon. You know that you know, and so we put all our trust in the economy, and 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 the shaking, the shaking that has happened in society where everything is is, is just shattered. You know, and so the Lord said, if I bring the locust, I mean, well, I mean, Lord, God is a loving God. Lord, don't you want, you know? To provide for us is your name Adonai Yireh, the Lord who see to it to provide, you know, and El Shaddai, the Lord who, who, who gives uh, abundances of resources. So if God is a loving God, how did it bring the locust into the land? You know, this is a big question, you know, the economic shutdown. You, you don't want people to suffer. You created them. You love them. You care for them. So wh why are you sending the locust? This is a big question that we have. Why is there economic shutdown? You know, where people are losing their jobs. And then the third thing says, if I send pestilence upon my people, and the word pestilence in Hebrew is dever, dever. And Dever is one of the 10 plagues, you know, there was the fifth plague in Egypt, you know, and there's many stories of the plagues that you can see uh, in, in, in history. And, uh, and it's always a way for God to, uh, to take attention from the people. He says he sends pestilence in order to prepare the people to come to him. And, uh, and so it says, if I send pestilence, the devil upon my people, and the virus is called in Hebrew, in Israel, a devil, you know, it's called, it's called a, a, a pestilence. So God has allowed this pestilence for a purpose. And uh, with the pestilence, there is a message that the Lord is saying to us. And I think for us in Israel, we had to review our theology <laughs> about who God is, you know, that God is not only the, 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 the you know, the joyful grandfather sitting in the clouds and giving all the toys and the sweets to his, uh, his, his great, great, great children, you know, uh, but he's also a God of holiness and he's a, he's a God of purity, he's a God of justice, he's a God of judgment. And of course, the Lord is slow to anger, but he can be angry, <laughs> you know, uh, you can see in the scriptures. And when the time has come, when the time is ripe, God moves and he moves through different actions that is mentioned in the scriptures and you can see in the in the in the Torah but you can see also in the New Testament when the Jesus speaks about the end will it be, when will the end time come and he says well when you see pestilence when you see wars rumors of wars famines earthquakes you know and uh, you know and um, and he says but let 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 you not be dismayed let don't 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 worry because this is the birth pangs this is the beginning of tribulation but you know for yeshua to come before yeshua comes there's need to be the birth pangs before a baby is born the, the the mother has to suffer you know we have four children and i i i, I accompany my my wife <laughs> you know to the hospital all the time and stood with her you know every time and i want to tell you it's not i mean it's it's painful it's painful to give birth but once the baby is born then you know the joy comes in you know and 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 the, and the suffering is 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 removed you know it will dry all our tears uh and it will give us you know those who sow with tears shall reap with joy so we are in a time of birth pangs we are the time of trials we are in a time of preparation and everything that is happening when you hear about devil pestilence when you hear about economic shutdown when you hear about tribulations and wars and chaos on the streets i mean it's basically most of the nations are going through the same things isn't it amazing to see that we live in a period of time where it's not only one country or one continent like it used to be but it's the whole world is the whole world you know and I, I am speaking to my country to Israel you know in the beginning of uh, we, we it started in Purim you know we, we 
we were we were we were discussing whether we should celebrate Purim or not, you know, because there was already talks about this virus coming in, and we we just we just said no, let's go ahead, let's celebrate Purim and let's trust the Lord. And we were we had a big Purim celebration, and the next day they, they said, okay, that's it, you go on confinement and confinement. You know, in the beginning, in the in the natural, in the flesh, we fight that confinement. No, I mean they don't. They're not gonna shut us down. You know, they're not gonna close us. They're not gonna. You know, and and you know, we we needed God to speak to us. So we went to the Lord and we say, Lord, please speak to us. What what's going on with us? I mean, I mean, you know, sh should we stop to meet and, and 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 gather and and you know, and and. And the Lord spoke to us, and I, I want to share with you the word that he gave us. It was in Isaiah 26, Isaiah 26, verse 20 to 21. And for us, I mean, I'm, I'm going to share it for our congregation, you know, Keilata Mahayan and, and, and what we receive and also what many of the brothers in Israel receive. So we, we were at peace with that, you know, and it, it comforts us when we hear the voice of the Lord and we, we, can, we can agree with him. You know, and this is um, Isaiah 26, verse 20 to 21. And it says like that. This is what the Lord said. Go, my people, enter your rooms, shut the doors behind you, hide yourself for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling. He's coming to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. The earth will conceal its slain no longer. So when we got this word, you know, it, it just suddenly we just, okay, Lord, we, we, <laughs> We understand you put you put us on Shabbat mode. You put us on Shabbat mode. So I'm I'm talking now about Passover. This is April, okay? I'm talking about the month of April now. This is I'm 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 bringing you to the to to, to to all the the things that we went through. So so we were on confinement. Our government basically um, did not put us on confinement. The Lord put the government on confinement. You understand that? The Lord was in control of our government. And this is what we understand is the supreme authority. Government are not doing anything without God uh, bowing their knees, you know, because, because what happened is that our government did not want to go on confinement. They wanted to go business as usual and let the economy strive and, and, and drive, you know, because basically, you know, this is the way the world is working. You know, you, you have no jobs, you have no food. So, but the Lord bended the knees of our government and bended the knees of all the governments of the earth for a purpose. He says, I want to have a word with you. I want to, to talk to you. And so he humbled, he humbled the nations. We were humbled. Of course, in the beginning in Israel, we were one of the what we call the green country almost nothing happened to us we are just maybe 200 people who passed away we're almost protected from corona and we saw all the nations you know what happened in italy and france and britain and united states and all those countries and we just said oh lord thank you father that you are protecting us you are really watching over us and for us there was a, a big thing that happened is that the lord was speaking to us about Yes, I, I, I want to protect you because I want to bring all the Jewish people who are still outside of Israel. And what happened, it brought an influx of, of new immigrants, of Jewish new immigrants from New York City, from England, from France. You know, many people decided to make Aliyah to come back, you know, the Jewish people to come back to the land of Israel. So for a season, we are about, about three months, was really, I mean, it was very... Um, we're very protected as far as the virus uh, happened. And so there's a lot of Jewish people who decided to come back to Israel and to come and, and bring it come back to the land. But then after when we reached the summer, something happened, there was a big change. There was a big change because suddenly we find ourselves, uh, you know, uh, boasting about all the answers we have the answers for the world and we, you know we are the the most clever ones and we are protected and, and instead of relying on the god of israel that protected us you know you know it's always taking taking a credit for ourselves it's credit taking taking to say oh we, we you know this is because of us and this is because our wisdom and 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 
and God really humbled us as a land. And I want to tell you as a people, as a land, we, we, we completely humble now. We completely humble. Our, our land, our country is in a shamble. Everything is, is, I mean, from every way, you know, the economy, the, uh, the war uh, with our neighbors, you know, the, the in, from Syria through, through Iran, and uh, what, what's happening also in Lebanon with the Hezbollah, uh, in the Hamas, you know, in the Hamas, uh, you know, there was a very bad time until last week. And now God, God allowed the Corona to touch the Gaza Strip. So now they are calling on Israel to help them. And so they stopped the war that uh, against us, you know, so because they were putting out fire, you know, and burning all the land. And so the Lord used the Corona virus in order to stop the, the, what, what the Hamas was doing in the Gaza Strip. So we see the end of the Lord with this virus. I mean, for me, it's very difficult to say this because of course people are dying. We have a lot of sick people. We have, you know, uh, I mean, thousands of, of sick people every day, new ones. And then we have people in hospital. Uh, but I, I want to tell you uh, something very important for us that the Lord has been showing us that he's on the throne and he reigns. And there is a time, there is a time where, 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 where judgment has to happen. If you look all over the world, there is a big war. Yeah, there is a big war that is happening about the shedding of innocent blood. And I, I, don't, I, I don't know how much you are involved with that, but I want to tell you that the, the, the blood of the innocent babies are crying out for justice for more than 40 years. And I believe God has decided that's it. Enough is enough. And so there is, there is a, a, a judgment upon the nations who are doing abortion on demands. Now, this is very interesting. I don't know if you're following a little bit the news about this, but it's, it's a big issue in Israel because in Israel we have abortion up to the nine uh, months. And basically, our government has been completely close to the issue of, of, uh, of the right to life. Uh, basically, um, many governments from the right, from the left, you know, this is why I'm saying it's not, it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with morality. <laughs> basically, you know, when the scriptures say you shall not kill, it, doesn't mean, it means also you shall not kill innocent babies, you know, that, uh, that have that. And, and so basically... Our country has blood on their hands. And uh, for me, the, the book of Ezekiel chapter 22 is really uh, what God is saying to his people. And I just want to use a few sentences here. Uh, you know, Ezekiel chapter 22. Um, now, you son of man, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city who causes her to know all her abominations? And you shall say, thus says the Lord God, O city that sheds blood in the midst of you, that your time may come, and that make idols unto thyself to defile you. You are become guilty in your blood that you have shed, and, you are you have, and are defied in your idols which you have made. You have caused your days to draw near, and are come even unto thy years. Therefore, I made you a reproach unto the nations, a mocking to all the countries. Those who are near and those who are far shall mock you, you defiled of name and full of tumult. Behold, the princes of Israel, everyone according to his might, have been in you to shed blood. And then it goes on and goes on, the chapter 22 uh, of Ezekiel. But I want to come to that verse in verse 30, which has, I believe this is a word for us. Uh, the believers, and I'm going to speak about us, you know, as the body, the remnant. The 30, uh, Ezekiel 30, uh, 20 to 30, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the bridge before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Is, isn't it sad to read what the Lord is saying? I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap to intercede, to stand for the land that I will not destroy it. I didn't find any. You know, in the time of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God spoke to Abraham. He spoke to Abraham that uh, he will um, destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, they were uh, uh, wicked cities. 
and God said I was going to bring judgment upon them. And so uh, you remember, um, Abraham was a friend, he's a friend of God. So he started to plead with the Lord. He said, but Lord, you know, you, you're not going to punish the, the just, the righteous with, with the sinners. What about if there are 50 righteous people in the, in, in the city? Would you judge the city? And the Lord said, no, I will not judge the city if there are 50 righteous. And so Abraham started to bargain down, you know, and said, what about 45? And the Lord said, no, 45, no. What about 40? What about 30? What about 20? And then he went down to 10. What about if there are 10 righteous? And the Lord said, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, even though they are wicked cities, if there are 10 righteous in the city. You know why your city is not being destroyed right now? Because you are more than 10 righteous here standing because of the remnant. You know why our city is not destroyed? You know why, why the land is not destroyed? Because if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways, then the Lord has promised to heal. The healing will come through the believers. The healing will come through you. You are going to bring the healing of the coronavirus. You are going to bring the Lord to move and to do wonders in your country. If you are willing to enter and be the one that the Lord is looking for, it says, I sought a man among them that should make up a hedge. So we have to stand in the gap. This is not the time for self-protection. This is not the time to, to fear for our lives or for our health. This is a time to stand in the gap, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face, and to and to do to do warfare <laughs> and to declare the salvation of the Lord and be active in our witnesses. This God is still the same before Corona and after Corona. He's called us for one purpose: go and make disciples, go, go and proclaim my kingdom in the midst of darkness. The light shine brighter, and this is why the message of what's happening in the world is first for the church. It's first for the believers. The Lord is always speaking through to his children. You know, I mean, the world, the, the world is the world. <laughs> you know, the only thing that will make the world change is our prayers and is also going to be uh, uh, the, 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 the repentance in the hearts of people and, and through the witness of the gospel. So for us, it's basically, I think, a wake up call. It's a wake up call for the church. It's a wake up call for each and every one of us to say maybe we have been passive, we have been sitting on the fence, you know. Uh, you know, it's amazing because, um, you know, we're talking about the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and, 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 and of course we're talking about the, um, the confusion of the sexes, you know, the, uh, the immorality coming through homosexual li li lives and, and sex, same sex marriage and everything. And so many times when we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, we think about homosexuality, but in the book of Ezekiel, this is the book of Ezekiel here, it says in the uh, chapter 16, verse 49, you know, um, it says, behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom, Sodom, you know, uh, this is 40, verse 49, pride, fullness of bread, careless ease was in her and in her daughters, and neither did they strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. They were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. You see, the sins of Sodom were, were, you know, homosexuality was just the fruit of the root sin, which was pride, fullness of bread. Basically, they wanted more and more and more and more. You know, they wanted to live in selfish living, you know, uh, not caring about people around them, uh, careless ease, and did not help the poor and the needy. And they were prideful and they committed abomination. You see, this is, this is basically the sin of our Western civilization. The Western civilization, it's all about me, 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 I, me, mine, you know, this is the trill, you know, the trinity of, of humankind. And I believe God is putting his finger of, on selfishness and, 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 and challenging us as, as his body. Are we living also selfish life? Are we living in the same lifestyle of the people? I mean, you know, are we just believers in names, but is our lifestyle different? Uh, do we have a radical lifestyle that will challenge the people instead of, you know, 
getting more and more and more better and better to just to 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 to, to help the, the the needy the orphans the widows the strangers you know i mean like, like the scripture is teaching us and to bring the gospel of of, of yeshua mashiach you know uh, one of the last time i was in england i was in leicester leicester the city of leicester and uh, and i was uh, in the main the main um, the big the biggest uh they call place you know the square the big square and in the big square they were they were this um, this um, this Muslim people. They were just all dressed in white, uh, and they had the tables in front of them, and they were sharing the, the the Quran. They were sharing the Quran, and they were, and I I was just looking around, and I was see, uh, looking I was I was looking if there was not any believers around, and I didn't find any. <laughs> uh, if, you know, finally the Muslims there, and it was just in front of the statue of this guy. You know, this is, I just heard this story of that guy, the Montfort, you know, is the one who killed uh, the Lollards, you know, those who were bringing the gospel in the English language for the first time. And uh, of course, this man has a his statue in the city. Uh, it was a, you know, uh, and so I, it just dawned on me, it says, well, we rejected the people of the word, you know, and uh, and of course there was the per persecution of the Jews also that happened. So the, the 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 Jewish people were rejected. The Bible was rejected. And now instead of the Bible, now we have the Quran and we have this uh, Muslim evangelist on the streets. And they were they were just free to do what they wanted. And everything that they did was full of lies. They were saying, you know, we are the we are the true Christians because we're doing exactly what Jesus is doing. Your Bible is fake because it was it was it was changed and 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 deformed and everything you know uh you know you know what they're saying I, 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 you know and and i came to them and say i'm sorry sir but i just want to tell you something you are very ignorant about the bible and uh we know for sure that the bible that jesus had is the same bible that we have in our hands because you know the greatest archaeological discovery of the 20th century is the is the the scrolls of qumran uh, near the Dead Sea. 1947, they found all the scrolls of the Bible that shows that the same Bible that we have in our hand is basically uh, the same Bible that Jesus is quoting from. So therefore, what you're saying is a lie. And if you're saying a lie, how can you bring any truth to the people? So I think, and they, they, they were challenged. There were three of them. They started to look at me and they, and suddenly I just, I just sensed the evil spirit then talking to her. Where, where are you from? <laughs> you know, I mean, of course I didn't want to tell him where I was from. You know, I just said, I just said, well, what I want to tell to tell you is that you need to study more your Bible, and you will find that Isa Jesus is the Son of God, and uh, and um, and is the true Lord. You know, so I just find I, I was a stranger as a foreigner. I just had one hour, on, on, and I just looked around and I said, where is the remnant? Where where are the believers here? Uh, I'm sure they were in the churches worshiping the Lord, you know, or listening to a message. Uh, what about the marketplace? Aren't we called to the marketplace? Well, aren't we called in the public square? Aren't we called? Aren't we called to be in the park? I, I, I love. I, I love the thing you on the park. I, I, I want to. I want to bless you. I want to encourage you. I want to go there with you. We need to be in the places where the people are. We need to be in the hospital, maybe helping and passing on the mask, and you know, just just encouraging the people you know we need to be there where the people are i think the time for ghetto churches is over i think we need to rethink differently the way we live our faith our faith has to, has to be in action you know right you agree with me i'm not too radical for you i'm good <laughs> okay <laughs> so i just want to encourage you um there's so much i want to say but i don't know how much time uh, i i still have but what I, what I want to say is this, uh, the main sin is pride. The main sin that we, we need to repent is pride, is, is selfish living, is worshiping mammon. And because mammon can be a secure, mammon is the, the god of money. It can be a security. And we, you know, uh, it's, it's not about how much we have, but it's about how much we give. <laughs> that is important, you know. Uh, and if God blesses us with, with, with possessions, then it, it's, to pass them on to, to others and to help others in needs, you know. So I, I believe we have a lot of homework to do uh, for us as a congregation. I think we entered back, we, we entered back, we, we, 
into a love stage, you know, where people, we were all tested in our faith um, because we were shut down for only 20, we, months ago we could meet only 10 people and now we can 20 people. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't mind, I mean, 10, pe 10 righteous people in Sodom, I mean, we, we <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> Lord, give me 10. And now, so now we have pockets of 20, 20 each time. So we, we had, uh, yesterday we have a men's meeting. We were 18 together. It was the first time we saw some of the brothers. I mean, some of them are, were very hesitant to come, but we, we finally draw, draw them. So we have groups of 20. So we have pockets of 20 and I, and so we meeting with um, different groups face to face. I'm talking about face to face meeting. I'm I'm a little bit zoom out. I want to confess to you um, with all these months, but uh, I don't mind um, traveling to England to meet with you <laughs> and to encourage you. <laughs> but uh, I like I like when I you know face to face meetings. I'm I'm more uh, you know <laughs> so. So yeah, be strong and have good courage and maybe we can leave a time of question and answer and I'll be happy to answer what you want to say, what you want to ask. You know, you spoke there about Leicester, the Muslims having the boldness to go and witness on their faith. I think one of the failings of the Christian body in Britain is boldness. We've become very cowardly. We're very intimidated by the government and by opposition and by criticism. And we need that spirit, that fire in our bellies, which overcomes that cowardness. And we actually go Amen. out and proclaim the word of God again. I mean, when we're meeting in the park, even in the park, we've faced opposition. But we haven't buckled and uh, we, we've kept it going, you know. And it's, it's so important, as you say, to get out of that, the holy hubble, hubble and huddle and... Uh, meet with the people again, show our face to the people. Because people in the park, they heard us on Sunday. They <laughs> heard us loud and clear, and they received it. You know, you know, we have also a ministry in, uh, outside in the park also. And what we do, we basically, we put a big table, and then we put the scriptures in all the different languages, because we have a lot of foreigners in, in Tel Aviv. I'm speaking about Tel Aviv. We have a, a church in Tel Aviv with Indians, Sri Lankans, and you know Nigerians, so we have we have uh, this is uh, a lot of people from all over the world, but we have also um, you know people without uh, homes and uh, prostitutes and so forth. So what we do, we put the scriptures, but next to it we put food, very good food. We have people who cook; they cook the food. So we have three hundred meals, hot meals, and then we have coffee and drinks. So we put the table. Nice. I don't know if you can do that in your country, but we 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 give it free. And and uh, and so pe people are usually uh, after they had a good meal, they they are interesting to talk about the Lord, and and then we pray for them on the street. We say, you know, are you are you sick? Do you suffer from anything? And we pray for you. So we pray for them on the streets, and we we expect the Lord to do some miracles. So that's 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 a, you know, back to street ministry, and and I, I tell you, I love it, and and the people they love it also. The people they just they come to life. I mean, we had people who were just very. Um, you know, withdrawn and everything. But as soon as you're talking to them about going into the streets, they they, 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 they want to go there and they want to cook. They say, what, what, I want to cook. You know, I know how to cook. I can prepare. So they bring with big, big, you know, things. And it's amazing. It's bringing, it's bringing the, the community alive, you know, just, uh, and I think it's, you know, it's doable. Mm -hmm. It's doable. You can, you start once a month, then, you know, then you can go for once a week if you, as the Lord leads, but uh, I, we need to be creative. We need to be creative, you know, and the Lord wants to, to encourage us basically not, not to, not to close ourselves into fear and, and passivity. And, and just, I, I think this, this, this time is really a challenge for us. Uh, you know, we are tested, but we, we need, like you say, we need to be bold. Let's be bold. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can, yeah. can I just um, say, you know, don't worry about the time because I think all of us here would listen to you all night. <laughs> um, so please, whatever it is you've got to share, you know, anything else, just share it because it's so encouraging just listening. And the one thing that you touched on, which is really been speaking to me, is the birth pangs that 
not to be afraid of it because at the end of it, there's going to be the kingdom of God. There's going to be something glorious at the end. Amen. Just like when I was given birth, there was no turning back. It was the birth pangs had to go through it. But to really have that perspective that at the end of this, there's going to be something so wonderful, you know. So it's just so encouraging and, you know, it's so lovely. You know, I've heard the scriptures all my life that, you know, the, they'll get hold of the, is it the titties of the of the Jewish person to speak? And when I listen to you, Tony, I'm thinking, just speak all night, please. Don't, <laughs> don't think about the time. We just want to hear it all night. So carry on, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. How many children do you have? I have three. Three? Um, I have three. I have Jacob, Isaac, and Jess. But when you were talking about the birth pangs, I used to be a little bit afraid of tribulation. But that perspective of it's okay to be a little bit afraid. I was a bit afraid in childbirth. I knew what was coming. But it's having the perspective that at the end of that, there's going to be joy unspeakable. And I think that's the message that the church needs to hear. You know, so... Thank God, Tony, that you and others are speaking, that we're in the pit and being bold enough. And you're not radical. This is not radical for us. We want to hear this. <laughs> we want to hear people being radical. Radical is good, no? <laughs> it, it will keep us awake. We don't want to sleep no more. We want to be on fire for God. So be as radical as you want with us, Tony. <laughs> we're scouts, we can handle it. <laughs> Amen. Don't don't go away. You you encourage me. <laughs> I'll let so, someone else speak now. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah let's. Uh, anyone who wants to ask question. Yeah, Tony. I have a qu obviously. I have a question. We're approaching the full feasts, uh, trumpets, etc., uh, etc., et going up to tabernacles. We always say this next year in Jerusalem. How, how are we preparing for, for the, the full feast this year? Is, is things dramatically different? I, I don't think so. I think, I think God is the same that is and that was and is and is, and is forever. I, th I don't think we need to. I think we are getting closer. I mean, this is my understanding. We're getting closer. I think it's a wake-up call. This virus is a wake-up call. For us, it has challenged us about okay, what about if I, you know, if I die to, today or tomorrow? Uh, it's 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 showing us signs that basically how the world is able to really control uh, its population. You know, very so we are we we know that we are facing some issues that are linked with the end time. But I think as far as the feast of trumpet, it's 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 basically you know it's prophetically. It's, it's about the rapture basically our lord and you know it's, it's about it's about in the last trumpet you know uh we will be raised and meet the lord in the air basically it's 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 taking the bride and uh, and 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 basically the lord is always after his bride you know i mean it's is really preparing his his, his bride is 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 we have to prepare ourselves and to cleanse ourselves and to to purify ourselves we have we have we have been mixing a little bit with the world i mean we need to clean our feet and and wash wash our feet and and and, and repent and uh, you know everything that uh, we have brought as values from the world we have to get them out of our system you know and and and, and separate ourselves it's not that we don't love the people we love them but but you know, you remember this is Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, he, 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 chapter six. He, he meets the Lord. You know, he has an encounter with the Lord, and uh, and he sees the angels. You know, in the seraphim crying, "Holy, holy, holy!" And he says, "Oh, you know, he has a vision of holiness of God and says, "Oi, I'm a man with unclean lips, living in the midst of people with unclean lips.'" So basically, the prophet said, "Oh." I, I'm doing the same sin as the people around me, and I'm supposed to be the example for them. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be the spokesperson for them, and 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 look at me. I'm 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 a sinful person, and and you you remember what the Lord said? You know, it says, okay, bring bring from the altar, you know, the 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 uh, you know the embers, you know, the and 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 they were of course 
it was not the embers, but it was the blood of the sacrifice that was on the embers. You know, it was a, the blood of the sacrifice cleansed cleanse his lips, the blood, you know, uh, but burn his lips. This is why the book of Isaiah is 66 chapter. I, I think after chapter six, Isaiah was better in writing than speaking. When you get your lips burned, I mean, every word is very important here, you know, but, but you know, it was the, the, the holy, we need the revelation of the holiness of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so we need to have that Amen. back as a fire into us. And we need, we need mm -hmm. to fear the Lord because he's holy. He's holy and he is holding up accountable for our sins. So it's not, we need to, we need to release everything that is hindering us, you know, to putting us down and, and cleanse ourselves. And, 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 and so uh, repentance as a lifestyle, you know, the same time we, we take shower and we wash our bodies, we should, you know, ask the Lord to come, you know, his blood to cleanse us and to forgive us and just to release or everything that we still holding from the world, you know, uh, from, and, 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 and just, um, I, just offering ourselves as living sacrifice daily. I mean, this is discipleship, you know? Uh, so, so that's, I believe this is the calling of the Lord. He's preparing his bride, he's preparing you. And you know, I, I mean, I know there's a young guy who is a very brand new believer. He's convinced that the Lord is coming in Rosh Hashanah, he's coming in the Feast of Trumpet in one week. <laughs> next week the lord is coming i said uh, are you sure he, yeah i believe i'm i'm you know i said okay well we should we should we should all believe that the lord is coming you know and so let's prepare ourselves so he's he's really you know he's ready he's ready he's ready to go i hope he will not be disappointed if it doesn't happen in rosh hashanah or if it happens in only in the feast of tabernacle but you know we should prepare ourselves i believe this is this is the calling for this virus warning is to prepare ourselves and 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 still still just to continue because you you, you know you know in, in the scriptures i mean it was written 2000 years ago and and it's it's you know it says and 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 soon the lord you know soon the lord will do it you know but we know that for the lord one day is like 1000 years you know so <laughs> one day is 1000 years so soon Okay, it's been two days now since the New Testament was written. So, <laughs> so Amen. I, I, I want to encourage you because in this season, you know, I, I mean, in the beginning, when when you we, we go on the shock, you know, we don't know it's a new thing, what, what how we react and think. But for us, the encouragement that came was people coming to faith. We had this young girl, 22 years old. She's coming from a very... Uh, you know, Jewish secular background, she came to faith and she asked to be baptized in water. You know, in Israel, when people want to be baptized in water, it means they mean serious business, you know, it's like, so So she she, she wanted to be baptized. And then we had these people who, who, who left the Lord, you know, they, they were in our congregation, and they, 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 you know, they, they got drawn by the world, but through that situation, they came back to faith. And we're able to minister to them. And so we have people who have returned, you know, so instead of people leaving the faith, we saw people returning. But it's true that on the other way, we had people that we had so many expectations because they were supposed to be mature believers. And now they, <laughs> they kind of, be, they, you know, it's, it's amazing because it's like everybody has been tested in different ways. So people, you don't expect them to come forward and grow in the faith. They, 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 they you know, they have revelation from the Lord. And then people that you you expect to be mature and and, and, and handle the situation, they because probably they, they are used to a certain you know a lifestyle uh, you know about uh, you know uh, and they are challenged. We are challenged in that. We 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 have usually we are people who don't like change. I mean I don't know most of the human beings they don't like the change. So when the Lord is shaking us, we 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 say, okay, Lord, what are you doing? But I believe this is for our good. This is for our good. <laughs> June, you wanted to say something. I, I just wanted to ask, um, would you say in Israel at the moment, the virus, you know, the situation there, you know, around the virus, would you say that the people are becoming more God conscious? Are, are they more God conscious these days? I, 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 I don't see it so well. I see it only on the personal level. I can tell you that there are individuals and people. I think our people as a whole, they are they took 
the issue, uh, you know, looking for a scapegoat in our government and basically they're focusing on the government and they're fo focusing on the politics and they're, they are not looking for the Lord at all. I think we need to pray for a real spirit of repentance. And this is what we are praying. This is what we're pray praying now because now starts uh, next week, next Wednesday, we'll start uh, the, day, the day of uh, the Feast of Trumpet. And so between the Feast of Trumpet and, and Yom Kippur, we have the 10 days of awe where uh, everybody for 10 days, they pray in the synagogues. And so we are, we are going to be praying there too. We, we're going to be praying for them. So I think this is a good time to ask for the Lord to bring repentance. And, you know, um, the same way this young man believed that uh, the Lord is coming in the, in the Feast of Trumpet, there is another man uh, who said, well, on Yom Kippur, the Lord is going to do a miracle and it's going to release us from the coronavirus. So I said, well, let it be according to your faith, brother. And so, but anyway, you know, we, we hope for the best, but we always prepare for the worst. And so basically we're going to be praying for this season. I, I want you to join us, all of you, join us and pray with us. And let's see what the Lord will do. You know, he, he hears the prayers of his, of his mm -hmm. children. You know, if we humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn away. He will hear us from heaven. He will forgive our sins and heal our land. So this is the message of Second yeah. Chronicles 7. We do need to be, sorry, we do need to be out in the streets. We do need to be speaking the words of God. We do need, it. we can't waste any more time. You've got things happening in the, um, in the schools, uh, mental health, this mindfulness thing that's going around. It's rapid and it's not good. Yeah. People need prayer. When I was um, younger, you know, used to get a Bible. That was your counsellor. Jesus was your counsellor. It need people need to come back to to that to the Lord, the mental health, mental health, Amen. mindfulness, the yoga, Amen. the everything else. It it's rapid, and we do need to be speaking and Amen. repenting and praying. We do. Amen. You know what? I, I was really struck when you talked about judgment. That, uh, yeah. you know, we should regard this as a judgment on the nation and on the world, really, for, for the blood the, the blood of the innocence that's been shed. And that's been on my heart. And, and I mentioned that, actually, right at the start of this coronavirus. And um, people didn't want to hear that. And they don't want to hear it now. And to be honest, it's not often mentioned. You're the first person to I've heard actually mention that this is a judgment from God on the, for the injustice of the slaughter of the unborn. And uh, we need that. We need to get that out. We need people to realize that God is a God of justice and he will judge the nation. And we need repentance. We know when the scripture is said, without repentance, we will perish That's as right. a people, as a nation, as individuals. And uh, we need that message. People, the chair seems reluctant to speak that message, to tell people that God is a judge. But it's uh, when you spoke those mm -hmm. words in the sermon, it brought a gravity to what you were saying. And uh, it really made people listen, you know, because um, we do need to fear God. We have lost that fear of God. That's why there's so much immorality. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a message that the church wants to be liked. It wants to be part of the modern world and it wants to be accepted but that's not our calling our calling is to wake people up to the reality of god god is a holy god and he is a just god and we must recognize that we can't walk away from that and it's really powerful like you said that this plague in israel is the i don't know is it diabolus the devil it's called the devil and it's the devil running. Devil, the devil, devil, yeah. It's called devil. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but we're not hearing that, you see. We need that message to be to be come out from the church. We need to speak that message. And I, I just want to mm -hmm. sort of amplify what you said there. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I I want to read to you another scripture that the Lord really spoke to us through. Of course, we've been, you know, since for the last six months, we've been studying the word of God, really, like, like we, we, we never before, you know, going back to scriptures and, 
And there was a, in the book of Habakkuk, in the book of Habakkuk, this is Habakkuk the prophet. Um, it says, um, it says in the, this is the prayer, the, you know, the, the, the prayer. And, and I think the book of Habakkuk is also so, so actual because you see the prophet was arguing with God. It's a God, how come there's so much sinfulness in our nation? I mean, we, 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 we are a sinful nation. Lord, do something. The, the injustice, you know, the, the people, the, there's, no, there's no justice, you know, and people are, are getting, getting killed. And, and the Lord said, well, don't worry. I'm going to take care of the, the sin. I'm sending the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. And the Babylonians, they were the enemies. And, 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 and then you've got Habakkuk says, but Lord, the Babylonians are even worse than us. You know, how you, you know, how, how did you go allow them to destroy our country and put us into captivity? And so the Lord said at the end, well, don't worry, I'm going to take care also of the Babylonians, you know. So basically, the Lord is using the judgment also through the enemies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, one thing you need to, 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 to understand also, God is in control. And if you don't have truth, Lie is gonna lie is gonna take over the truth, and I think this is what we see in many countries of the world with the rise of Islam all over. You know, it's like if if we don't want the God of Israel, the true God of the Bible, then uh, there's gonna be the false idols coming. But look in in chapter three, what it says here. It says that it, in the middle of verse three, three three three, Habakkuk three three, his glory covered the heavens, the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand. There was his power was hidden. Before him went pestilence and fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth and looked and startled the nations. The everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed and his ways are everlasting. So you see, the Lord is using the pestilence. That was another scripture that strengthened us. He's using the pestilence. He's using uh, wars. He's using, uh, you know, floods. He's using, uh, you know, the fire that you can see in many parts of the world to draw our attention. He wants to speak with us. He wants our heart. He wants us to, he wants to prepare his bride. So basically, I think there's no better way but just to humble ourselves and say, Lord, you are sovereign in all your ways and you are using these pandemics. You are using this pandemic to, to draw the attention of the world. And uh, yeah, so. It's interesting you mentioned uh, Habakkuk. Uh, mid, in mid 1985, I received the same scriptures and um, by the way, I'm from Israel, and uh, I live shalom. here in England. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> and uh, I receive this very much, these uh, verses and chapters in Habakkuk. Um, and it happened because I was praying for Israel, and um, there was some incident, and the Lord led me to Habakkuk. And out of this came also another vision that is to do with this um, virus, um, which I saw the sea simmering and uh, it covered, when it actually flooded, it flooded the whole of the earth. And this water were black, pitch black. Uh, but interestingly, before that um, flooding, or I call it a, a tsunami, uh, the church were, all, were on the shore of that sea, oblivious to the, to the simmering sea behind them. And they were the first that the sea covered. It was very interesting. Um, so, but I, I do believe it is God's hand. And the, as the water were um, pouring all over, I could see the slowly, slowly, um, it started to get lighter and lighter. And then it turned, that very tsunami turned into crystal water. And, and that's what I'm saying to the Lord. I'm waiting for the crystal water. But this crystal water is being poured on already harvested fields, not on um, it, which to me, it sounds like the church first, like a big revival in the church. And that's how I, I see it. Now I'm, I'm seeing 
the tsunami of darkness because the sea symbolizes the nations and and darkness in the nations and and i believe that this is really um from the lord just like as you said because this the the heavens had was in bronze color of bronze which is judgment uh, and that that again i believe it is it is the uh hand of god in all this if it if it is came from the nations but he's using it really a lot using it in a big in a big way for the church for the nations for israel so yeah i think we are to see something great happening after this and i just like what want to say um i work in a supermarket and also helping a charity shop and the opportunities i've been having with telling people about the lord they were very very um receptive they were listening they're asking questions loads of them some of them even said oh maybe god is trying to tell us something so i want to encourage you that if you just allow yourself to be bold maybe my it is my israeli blood i just say it um so you just not to be afraid and it you'll be surprised how people really really want to know and they hear i speak to them about the prophetic and i speak to them about jesus uh, i speak to them about the demonic anything they're really 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 glad to hear and then i lead that to jesus he is the answer and and there is a lot of respond so just to encourage you don't be afraid Thank you. You know, um, it says in the scriptures, um, <clears throat> wait, wait until you receive the promise of the Father when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And, uh, you know, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the, the rest of the world, which I believe includes also uh, Liverpool, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh we, we we the only reason we have received the holy spirit is to receive boldness to be his witnesses and we only uh we only uh win uh through the blood of yeshua and the word of our testimony so basically it's through the blood of yeshua and through our witnesses that uh, that we will overcome the enemy it's, the, it's part of the armor of the spirit is the shoes the readiness of the shoes of the gospel of peace. If we don't have those shoes, and, and if we're not active in sharing our faith, uh, we, we, we're going to be weak. And, uh, and especially, uh, instead of being in, influencing the world, we'll be influenced by the world. And so I think this is uh, something to remember that those of us who have been passive in our witness, we should, um, we should be able to share and witness in season and out of season. It's part. It's part of our of our of our protective <laughs> armor, you know, to be his witness. And also, when when you you start to share your faith, you know that you know when you're in the park, you start to share your faith. The Holy Spirit comes upon you. I mean, because he's anointed, he's anointed you. <laughs> you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon is upon me to bring good news to the poor, to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted. That's Isaiah 61. And so we have received power and dunamis, and I, I would I would quote it, it, it power and courage, you know, to to bring the word in season and out of season. And yeah, there are, there are more people open than we think. You know, we need to have the eyes of faith. I think many times it all depends of how we what kind of glasses we have. We can have the black glasses to see everything is dark, no one is open, you know. But if we put the right glasses, the the, the <laughs> the glasses of hope, then we can see that the Lord has prepared already a harvest. There are people ready and, and everywhere. I can see it in my country. I see it everywhere. People are ready. This is a good time. This is still a harvest, a harvest time. It's still day. So we can wor work while it is day. And um, yeah, amen. <laughs> well, Steve is with me. That's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very much with you, Tony. It's been fantastic. And there's still plenty of time if there's more questions. You know, make sure you get your question if you want to. I don't know how much longer you can spend with us, Tony, but if you can take a few more questions, that'd be great. But I just, I am so encouraged tonight as well. Really grateful that you've spent this time with us. You know, really, really grateful. You can see what we're trying to do in Liverpool, trying to gather a congregation to come and hear this message. So it's it is a wake up call for us. There he is. Thank you. Tony. I was, I was doing some studying last night and I would like I would like your opinion on the religious leaders of Israel, because the religious leaders of the UK have seriously let the people down. And I was studying Jeremiah chapter seven. And it says, this is the word came to you, Yermeyahu from Adonai. Stand at that gate of the house of Adonai and proclaim this word. It's, it's the church leaders and the church people of this country who are leading the people into fear. They're the ones who should be standing up. There is the remnant, like us in the park and elsewhere, but I believe it's the organised religion, the leaders of the, the big three Christ, so-called Christian congregations. How is it in Israel with your religious leaders? For us in Israel, I mean, the religious leaders are the like the Pharisees. They not they have not recognized Yeshua as the Savior and Lord. They have not received this revelation. This is why, you know, uh, Paul is asking to pray for revelation. They have the zeal, but they don't have the revelation. So we need to pray for our religious leaders because they are still in the dark. But you know, the first will be the last. The Jew, the, the Jewish people were the first one to receive the gospel. They're going to be the last one to receive the gospel. When you see Jews coming to faith, you know, it's the, it's, it's, it's the Lord is coming back. So for us, the testimony is that tr uh, 30 years ago, we had 300 Jewish believers in Yeshua, and now we're more than 30,000. It's still a small number for 9 million people, but it's the, it's the remnant. It's the beginning. It's the, it's the beginning of the harvest. And we see some religious people coming to faith. It's, it's slowly, but uh, it's steady. So continue to pray. You know, Romans, um, Romans 9, 10, 11, this is talking about praying for the salvation of the Jewish people. And then uh, Yeshua will not come back until Jewish people in Jerusalem welcome him with a red carpet and said, you know, Baruch Abba, B'Shem Adonai, welcome in the name of Yeshua. So our calling is to pray for the salvation of the Jewish people. Um, listen, my brothers and sisters, I need, I need to go now very soon. So I just only have five minutes. So I want, can I pray for you? Can I bless you? Yes, is that okay? Yeah. Father God, I just want to thank you for my brothers and sisters. I just want to pray, Father, for that you continue to encourage them, Lord, encourage their heart. Lord, pour out your spirit upon them, Father. I just want to bless them. I bless you with the ironic blessing now. Yevarecha Adonai vishmarecha. Yair Adonai panav alecha veyechuneka. Yisa Adonai panav alecha veyasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you always. May the Lord make his countenance, his presence, be yeah. real with you always and yeah. give his peace that passes all understanding in the mighty name of Yeshua, King yeah. of Kings and Lord of oh, Lords. Amen. Tony, can I, just, can I just say, Tony, can you maybe make available to us something if people would like to make a little donation to the work that you do in Israel, maybe if you could leave something on at the chat so that we can go to whatever page would help us know okay. how to, to give as the Lord leads. So, so June, maybe what I do, I, I will send you maybe uh, all the details where you, you, you can send some uh, okay. money through you, okay? okay? Through the WhatsApp or something, okay? Mm -hmm. 
I'm very That's sorry, nice. but I'm, 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 they're calling me now and I need, I need to go and meet, okay. meet with them. So okay. thank you, my brother. Be blessed. Thank you. And thank you. We can do it another time. Thank okay. You. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Oh. Well, thanks for turning up, everybody. You know, really, thanks for turning up. You know, good show I was there for them. So we appreciate that, everyone's time. And we can stay in chat if you want. You know what I mean? We can. I'll answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he couldn't answer. <laughs> thanks, June. And thanks, Justin, for putting it on. Thanks, June, for getting him yeah. here. And, and really, thanks thank for everyone for turning up. Really. Yeah, thank That's you for the invite. Yes. It's really, really encouraging. Just just before you dash, we didn't get a chance to pray for him. So let's just pray for him together. A couple yeah. of us want to pray. I'll pray. Yes. A couple of others want to pray. Yes. You know, Father, we thank you for Tony, Lord. We thank you for the ministry. Mm. Thank you for the nation of Israel, Lord. And the privilege, yeah. Lord, that you would thank allow you. man to come and speak to us. All, mm. you know, this little group in Liverpool and surrounding areas. So we thank you, Father, for this privilege tonight. Thank yeah. you for Tony and his family and his oh, fellowship, yeah. Lord. Please bless them, Lord. Just as he's prayed the ironic blessing over us. We just pray yeah. back over them, Lord, that you bless yeah. him and his family and his fellowship and keep them and make your face shine, shine on them, Lord, and be gracious to them. And lift up your face upon them, like he said, your presence. And give them shalom in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank you for coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're thank you. are welcome. Thank you for your encouragement. You yeah. And yes. what was your name? Hey, hey, sorry. Sorry, say again. What, what was your name? My name is Carmela. Carmela. Welcome, Carmela. Welcome. Yes. Well, just so you know, I mean, this is a regular Bible study that we do anyway every Tuesday, but now we're making an effort, June is making an effort to get more of this sort of speaker to come and speak yeah. to this yeah. sort of wider group. So... You know, look out well, for your I, invites every week. Yeah. I, I was I was told that um yeah I, I will be sent the information for uh, future zooms. Great. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. We be have great. we have a group, we're not meeting yet, but we have a group that we meet uh, monthly and we look at Israel and, and things that happens in, in the world prophetically. We listen um to uh, Amir Tarfati as well. Yeah. And number of people like that. So yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Carmel, Carmel, how did you Car hear about the meeting tonight? Um, I had a. Is it is it Ronnie? Ronnie? Uh, right. Hi, hi. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you came to the you came to the charity shop and you told me about ah, it. Ah, brilliant. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great, it's good to have you with us. Thank you, we'll, my we'll pleasure. Sure you... Sorry? Sorry. We'll make sure you get all the information on future okay. speakers. Okay, that's, that's good. great. Great. That's good. Bless you. And you. Brilliant. Yeah. By the way, my, my grandson loves Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. 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 He'll go far, that lad. Uh, <laughs> but my husband <laughs> likes Manchester, so they always oh, get well. each other. <laughs> <I know>. uh, <laughs> my, 